All right, here we go with the video for Chapter 5, Section 2, Electron Arrangement and Atoms. And this is going to be one of your favorites because it's going to be really, really, really short because, well, once again, while I find a lot of this stuff really interesting, it's not really in the curriculum. Uh, there's a couple of things in this section that it's a good idea to have an understanding about, but you won't be specifically asked specific questions about these things. However, we'll refer to them later when we're looking more closely at the periodic table and electron configuration. So I figured it's worth at least having you write down a couple of things from here. Okay, so there's a couple of rules for electron configuration. Okay, and first one is the Aufbau principle. And what does that mean? Does it stand for anything? No, it actually comes from the German word Aufbau, mean building up or construction. So this is the rules for building up electrons, pretending that, right, let's say we have a nucleus with however many, and as we start filling in electrons around it, we're kind of building up. So here's an electron, and here's an electron, and then there's the next level, and I'm kind of being simple and cheating a little to make things easier, but one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they don't look anything like that at all. But for our purposes, when we're first learning, it actually makes it a lot easier putting the electrons in like so. So the building up. And if you noticed, I did this inside one first, and then I put electrons out here, and then I would go and put in my next energy level, etc. The rules of the Aufbau principle state that Electrons occupy orbitals of the lowest energy first. So you're always going to fill up an energy level before you move to the next, for the most part. Okay. Next one is the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay. Now, these are energy levels, but I'll show you some pictures in class and talk a little bit about orbitals. Each energy level is made up of these things called orbitals, right? So, and an orbital may describe at most two electrons. So here, this one has one orbital. This one here, since it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, it's going to have four orbitals. Okay, so this is three, two, n squared, nine, 18. This one can hold up to 18 electrons which would mean there would be nine orbitals. And it's not the type of thing you're going to have to memorize a lot in depth, but I'll show you pictures and kind of explain it a little bit in class because it's a little too confusing, I think, to uh, do in one of these videos. All right, and finally, Hun's rule. If you look up Hun's rule in your textbook, you'll see a lot more defining going into it, but I thought that was really complicated where you don't have to have it memorized. I figure for our purposes, let's just say that what Hun's rule ends up really meaning is electrons want to be as far apart as possible, which should kind of make sense because, you know, like we know opposites attract, right? So a proton and an electron will be attracted to one another. But two electrons, since they are both negative, and I'm not drawing these to scale, obviously, will want to repel. They don't want to be very close to each other. So when we start looking at the way orbitals are filled up, we just remember that they want to stay as far apart from each other as possible. So that's how they're going to fill up orbitals. All right, like I said, short and sweet. Uh, that's it for 5.2. Uh, the next one, 5.3, you're not even going to see me because I didn't have all the correct things, tools and whatnot to do the demonstration. So here, I'm gonna, for that one, I'm going to actually use uh, videos that somebody else produced just because they did so much a better job than I possibly could. And seeing the ideas I thought was more important than writing stuff down. All right, that's that. See you guys in school.